All right, our last topic um, related to polynomials is solving inequalities involving polynomials. Um, this again is something that you're gonna have to do fairly frequently once you get into calculus, uh, when you're trying to figure out things like where is a derivative positive, where is a derivative negative. This is gonna be key to solving a lot of optimization problems, curve sketching problems, things like that. So it's something that's gonna come up fairly frequently. Um, we'll start simple, we'll work our way up. Um, the first one is linear, right? So linear inequalities you learn going back to, to high school. I'm not sure what grade you, you see them in, but certainly this is a basic thing that you would have seen in school. Um, and linear equality, inequalities are fairly straightforward. So here you can rely on the fact that, well, you can always add something to both sides of an inequality, right? So we can, we can add minus 4, and we get... So 4 minus 4, of course, is 0. 3 minus 4, I get negative 1. So 2x bigger than negative 1 is equivalent, right? I can divide by 2. And because 2 is positive, I don't change the inequality, and I'm done. I've solved. x has to be bigger than minus 1 half, right? So. I might also want to give an interval of solution, so we could write it as minus one half to infinity. Okay, so we solved that inequality. Now, um, where where people get themselves into trouble is is you move from linear to things like quadratic, and you want to apply similar techniques, right? Um, and one of the things you might do. So here, notice you've got x's on both sides. And you might have this tendency to say, oh, let's, let's move the x over, let's isolate the x's, right? It doesn't get you anywhere. Um, once you go past linear to quadratic, cubic, anything else other than linear, there's really only one thing that works, which is going to be to basically isolate for zero. So you got to bring everything to one side, okay? So if I bring the 5x over and the minus 6 over, this is the same thing as saying x squared minus 5x plus 6 is bigger than 0, okay? So this is useful because now this, this boils down to deciding where is the polynomial positive and where is the polynomial negative. Um, and we know how to solve that problem because we know that the only possible places where a polynomial can change from positive to negative are at the roots, right? So once we find the roots, we know where the possible sign changes are, and then we just have to determine signs on either side of the root. Um, in this case, I mean, we kind of know, right, what things look like here. We can graph this. It's a quadratic, okay? It's a quadratic opening up. It's going to have a couple of roots, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to look something like this, right? There are going to be two roots. So we know it's going to be positive on the outside, negative in between, right? Um, we also, we know that just by looking at the leading coefficient, right? So either this is positive everywhere, okay, or it has an intercept, one or two intercepts, in which case it's going to be positive outside the intercepts, negative between. We know that because the leading term has positive coefficients, so we know that if this is a quadratic that's opening upwards. So how do we find those roots? Well, we factor. We've done this one before. In fact, we know this factors as x minus 2 times x minus 3, right? So solving the original inequality amounts to figuring out where is x minus 2 times x minus 3, where is that bigger than 0? So what you might do now is you might write down what we call a sine diagram. So in a sine diagram, you just draw yourself a little number line. On that number line, you mark off the roots. So there are only two roots, two, three. And then you put down the signs between each root. So we know, as we said, they're going to be positive outside the roots, negative in between, right? Um, the other way to realize that is you can always, you know, you can always choose some test value, like x equals 4, right? If I plug in 4, I get 
2 times 1 is positive, so I know it's positive out here. Um, I know that when I cross 3, this x minus 3 factor, right, it's positive here, but it's negative here. So this is going to change sign. This one hasn't yet, so now I have 1 minus sign, right? And then once I cross 2, this one becomes negative as well. Now I have two negatives, gives me that positive. There are a few ways to work that out. You could always do test values in each interval if you're not sure. There's our sign diagram. And we want to know where is this thing positive. So we just look for plus signs, right? Plus sign for positive. So we know that our solution is going to be that x belongs to either everything from minus infinity up to 2 or from 3 to infinity. Okay? All right. One last one cubic inequality, right? So maybe there's a bit more work involved here, but the initial strategy still the same. Bring everything over. x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. We want that to be bigger than 0, right? Okay. So let's see if we can factor. Um, maybe we check to see, can we actually group, right? Because if we can factor by grouping, it saves us from having to do long division. That's always nice. Take out the x squared, leaves me with x plus 2. Here, if I take out a minus sign, ah, I'm in luck, x plus 2. That minus sign, of course, is just minus 1. Okay, factor one more time, x squared minus 1 times x plus 2. We want that to be bigger than 0. And that's a difference of squares. x minus 1, x plus 1. Okay. So we need x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x plus 2. We want that to be bigger than 0. So we draw our number line. We mark off the three roots. So there are roots at minus 2, minus 1, plus 1. And now we have to work out the sign in each interval. So if we choose something bigger than 1, 2 for example, we can quickly see that all three factors are positive. So the whole thing is positive. If we choose something between minus 1 and 1, this first factor is going to become negative, the other two remain positive. 1 minus sign means the whole thing is negative. Between minus 2 and minus 1, now this factor and this factor, they're both negative, but that one's positive. Two negatives gives me a positive. And then finally, once we're less than minus 2, all three factors are negative. Three minus signs gives me an overall negative, and that means that if I want this thing to be positive, I look for the intervals with the plus signs. I want x to be between minus 2 and minus 1, or from 1 to infinity. Right? Um, of course, if this had been bigger than or equal to, we could have done that. Um, the only difference is now we include the zeros, and so the round brackets would become square brackets, except on the infinity, right? We never include infinity. 